With a few of the announcements that came in Digimon Con 2024, there was one thing that came out that reminded me that there is still some good Digimon stories that have been out there and have been told lately. And that, mainly, I am talking about, is Digimon Dreamers. Because Digimon Dreamers ended its chapter 1 most recently, but we got also an announcement that chapter 2 will be coming out early in April that will be able to continue the story that we just uh, that we're just getting into. Because, for those of you who have read all the way up to it, it seemed like the end of a story, but the very last chapter gave us quite a few things that could build into the future. So I want to give just a brief talk about Digimon Dreamers. I haven't talked about it in a while on the channel. My last video was just telling you about, really, how good it's been, and just how in general it's been one of the more exciting Digimon stories that we've gotten lately, and proof that we can get good translations of these things when there's not too much text. Because Digimon Seekers was not a good <laughs> indication of the translations we're going to get, so we hope that the Digimon Liberator web novel will do much better. But let's look into what Digimon Dreamers has done through an entire chapter and see what might be coming and should we be excited that more is coming. Because if you haven't, go out, go read it now because on April 3rd, it's going to be gone. It's not going to be available anymore for free. So if you want to still be able to read it for completely free on Digimon.net, go and read it now. So Digimon Dreamers has been a bit of a chill kind of story. It was definitely started as much more of a funny thing about Ritsu being pulled in by Pal at weird times, or Pulsemon. Pal is just his nickname for him. And we've had a few odd people show up, like Joe talking about Dimension S, which is apparently like a Wonderswan tie-in. Hiro was in the background with Gammon in the very first panels. It was very much a cute thing where Espimon was coming and trying to kidnap <laughs> Pulsemon to we talk about Digivolution with Dr. Vedamon, and it was a lot of fun. When they finally established that they were really going to push to fix the Digivolution curse, they went over to Wachelny, things got a bit more exciting and interesting because, oh my gosh, for people who have been following Digimon for a long time, Wachelny, that's awesome! That's something that, you know, has always kind of been around since Wizardmon back in the original Digimon adventure. But how much did we really know about it? It really had very little text about it, no matter where you looked, you could only find so much. There's a handful of these Digimon that are from here, and it's a place, you know, of magic, where magic is literally manipulating the very code of the world, is how magic pretty much works in Digimon. Okay, so this is a brand new place that we can explore, and for the most part we did. There was a couple of little differences there of how magic is more the way that you get stronger. It's not really necessarily the way of Digivolution that you get stronger, which is very unusual in Digimon, obviously. And there was a lot of Digimon there that you wouldn't expect to find in Will Chelney. Like, I wouldn't think of Leomon and uh, Mojimon. Just a bunch of these Digimon that were there that you wouldn't normally think of coming from there. And, you know, as far as I'm aware from any of their lore, they're not supposed to be there, but, you know, this is a story of, you know, these people came from Wachelny from another world. It can very easily move between them. It's not really my big concern. And we had the big showdown with Felismon. Felismon was an interesting little battle because it was, you cannot defeat me, I'm willing to make this sacrifice to do it. Well, hold on, let's do something cool. And then became really overpowered, which I will fully admit, Digimon does all the time. That it's, I digivolve, I win. That is 90 plus percent of stories that happen in Digimon is that is just that. Very simple. It's a good build up to that moment, and then it's over in an instant. Which can be good, but sometimes it's better to see more. But because it was over so easily in the end, it's like, okay, well, he's done. It's over. Felismon is done. But of course, it teases us with his master coming up to speak, which appears to be Barbamon, and telling him how there's a greater plan and he can't risk saving him, so you're on your own. I won't help you. And he gets taken care of. Or does he? Because if you look at the cover art for Chapter 2, that, that looks like Felismon. So unless there's more than one Felismon, he's probably coming back then. And once they've done that, they get access to the library, which they can undo the curse of Digivolution. 
Now, if you have access to the library of all of the magic of Wachelny, you can do a lot of things. I'm assuming that they're going to stay away from that <laughs> on purpose, because if you open up all of that magic that could possibly be in there, oh my gosh, you could break a lot of things. <laughs> so probably that's all we'll ever hear about the library. Maybe they'll prove me wrong in chapter two. But when he comes back to finally undo the curse, we have a mysterious newcomer. This is not the first time we've seen another human. Like I said, we saw Joe before. But now we have Nell and Bell here as well that are protecting Cypress Village. So they claim. And as far as I can tell from their actions that they did and we see in the flashbacks, this seems true. Could it be that she was brought, she's being brought in to be another character to interact with Ritsu to have another human around? Does she have some sinister plans? Does she have her own itinerary? Maybe not sinister, but there's plenty of options that open up with introducing her with her partner Labramon here. And when they go to break the curse, finally, they break the chains of it, but it also asks for a password. And what I'm assuming from this means that they've weakened it so that, like, Pal can still go to Champion, but until they do that, they can go further. Which is an awesome mechanic if you want to do, like, a Digimon Digital Adventure kind of campaign or something, or even a video game takes a concept like that, like the Evolution Tree did in Lost Evolution. There, there, there's some cool mechanics that you could use with that. That is a cool little thing and something more to build into the next chapter. So I've been happy with Dreamers. I really have. I've enjoyed it up to this point, but okay. So we're moving on into a whole nother part. Are you going to goof around and be funny for the first 10 chapters again and then get serious when we finally get to uh, more of a plot? Or are you going to stay more with the serious tone and keep moving on and keep the story progressing at a faster pace? Because it has been funnier, it was... I still enjoyed it when it was doing that, so that was okay. But that was when I could read it almost every week. Now that we're down to every month, like a usual... Like the usual publication was back when it was in Shikyo Jump, that's a long time to wait just for a joke. For me. That's what my biggest problem was with the Ghost Game, is just get on with it. Do something. And so... I hope that it continues to move on in the story progression part. And that we'll be able to quickly learn what... What do they, where do they have to go? What's the next MacGuffin? Well, it's the password that they need. So where are they? Where do they have to go to get it? Are we going to be like, oh, okay, we went to Wachelny, so now let's go to Iliad to find the password. I mean, that'd be awesome. I mean, it would be a little sad that if before we got the story game, we went to Iliad in the <laughs> Dreamers instead, even though we've been talking about the story game for seven years now. Uh... But yeah. So, I'm excited about Dreamers coming out. If they're taking away, though, Part 1 being free, is Part 2 going to stay free? As far as I'm aware, it still is. But, that may be subject to change because they're taking away the free part of, of Chapter 1. So, are they just taking it away to, so they can release it some other way? Mm, we'll have to wait and see. So, that is what has happened with Dreamers and why I am still excited that to see what they will do. Because... It's been a lull in Digimon right now for story, for stories, because Seeker's wrapped up as well, which I wasn't particularly happy with that epilogue. And so Dreamers is still going, and we're still got about a month to go, still waiting for Digimon Liberator to come out to give us another story in the comic and the web novel. But I hope it will be fun. I hope we will all get to enjoy and be able to have more Digimon stories to talk about so that, you know, I have actual video ideas after Digimon kind of kind of been struggling here a little bit <laughs> until we get some more stuff coming out. Come on, give me, give me, please. We need some more announcements. It's the end of the fiscal year, right? Give us. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little rant about Digimon Dreamers, and I hope you've been enjoying it as well. Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, everyone, remember to be awesome. Till the next one, take care.